let's, let's take a listen to the uh, tweet uh, that the uh, roommate put on his Twitter account. He said, roommate asked for the room till midnight. I went into Molly's room and turned on my webcam. I saw him making out with a dude. Yay. That sounds like the motivation here, that he wants to show the world that his roommate's making out with a dude. Uh, Michael, do you, do you interpret that as, as, as being biased, as being uh, uh, hateful? The motivation for this crime is because his roommate is gay? Uh, without any prior knowledge uh, to, this, to this kid's actions, just from that statement alone, no. I have to say, no. Uh, in college, lots of kids are upset because they come home to their roommates being with somebody else. I think it's really important that while we don't know if this is hate crime motivated um, or homophobic, uh, homophobia motivated, that it's important not to uh, call for these kids to be strung up on a post. Okay, we're not gonna do that, but how about this, Michael? Put us in the shoes of someone who has been harassed, someone who, in, as a teenager, feels like they're being bullied and kind of pushed around a little bit because they are, in fact, gay. Yeah, um, when I was 14, unfortunately, uh, the police report uh, reads that I was assaulted by about a dozen kids, okay? About a week later, I had brought a knife to school to either take my own life or to take, uh, to, to seek revenge well, on these tell guys. Tell us about those thoughts. And that, tell us about those thoughts about taking your own life because of what someone else has done to you. Well, that's what I want to help everybody understand that when something like this happens, as much as we want to try to understand what goes on through somebody's head after being victimized or wanting to commit suicide, we just can't. I remember making jokes during that week, treating it lightly, um, having a coming out with my parents, all these different emotions. And yet that one day, that one fateful night where I could have made a decision that could have uh, landed me in prison for the rest of my life, uh, certain things are running through my head. It, it's, it's, you can't reason. There, I can't explain it to you. I just can't. It's like if I were to say to you, how would you react if your mother, uh, when you're, if your mother dies? You just don't know till it happens. He was spying on me. Do they see nothing wrong with this? And that's the one that I find yeah. the most uh, uh, unsettling here, Michael, the fact that, you know, he posts this on his Twitter, the roommate does, and the roommate is getting sympathy because his roommate is gay. Well, yeah, I think that's, that's a really important thing to bring out because here's the thing. We, there's a lot of anger. There's a lot of frustration. There's a big blame game that people want to play when a tragic suicide like this happens. Um, but while we don't know for a fact if this is hate-motivated, again, it's really irresponsible to say that, the, that these two kids were, in fact, homo that, that, these, that these two kids were homophobic in any way. If we want to take that energy, that anger, that passion, and put it towards something, put it towards lawmakers. Put it towards schools and our school system who can have uh, programs implemented that would prevent this type prevent of thing it, from happening. And I happening. think part of the prevention starts from a uh, public discussion about the whole thing. Michael, Billy, Janelle Weinstein, great to have you on the program. Great to see you.